All right, we're about to go in and surprise Bluff City Tackle. Mark, Felicia, and Whitney are in size. It's really great father-daughter-ran business, and we can't wait to help them figure out how to grow this tackle business here in Alton. My favorite part, they have no idea we're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, guys! Surprise! You've been selected! Oh my gosh! Are you? Like, oh my god! You made your box six? Yeah. Are you you made your box oh. six? Yes! Oh my god! My you guys are literally in shock. This is the look of shock on your face. Oh I love it. Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one small town, focusing on the businesses that are the heart of their main street. What started as an idea became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for the $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the winner. Good evening, Alton, Illinois. Now, in our third season, the team is taking on its biggest challenge ever. The town is three times bigger than any we've helped before, and the hurdles Alton faces will put to the test the very idea of Main Street America. So, Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are going to work for the people of Alton, Illinois. And they're not alone. New season three co-host Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings while a whole cast of experts helps rehabilitate its businesses. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds, if together we can start a revolution. pick up a pole and throw it in the water, it'd be a very peaceful world. You get your mind off of everything else going on. You're focusing on your fishing and what you're doing and nature. You're out there having a peace of mind, and your mind can just go and relax. You know, if you don't catch fish, they'll go out and, and, and do it. It's enjoyable. It's peaceful. Looking at nature, you know, nothing is like that. Been in the bait business since 1991, and then I work in Boeing full time. Been over there, software engineer, 32 years. When I bought the shop, it was 2003. When I first bought it, I only worked Saturdays. I loved it. It was like R and R for me. Hey, One of the customers that was started coming in was my current wife, and she wasn't my wife at the time, but. He would talk to me and talk to me every single time I come in. He would talk to me, and I kind of felt like he was a little sweet on me. <laughs> she was very pretty, had a great smile, and my manager here said, we're going to quit carrying goldfish over the winter, and I told him, I said, hey, you keep those goldfish in here, because I want her to keep her coming here. So we went out on that first date. He was so, oh my God, he was just, he opened doors for me. He talked real soft. He was real sweet, and it was just, he, he stole my heart. We started going out. And a year and a half later, we got married. That's the best part of the bait shop. I was 21 when I started working in here, and it was just because I wanted just something to do for a while. Well, it ended up being that I kind of liked to be here a lot, and finally, I got the chance to take the job full time, and I jumped right on it. She's a sweetheart. She's my baby. She was my youngest daughter. He loved my kids. He loved Whitney. For him to want Whitney to have this, it means a lot. I mean, you couldn't ask for better. And we just spent a lot of quality time together, which is one of the things that I really miss now because I have to leave and go out of town to work. Felicia, she works at a power plant, and she used to work at the one locally here. And then they uh, closed, and she was able to transfer up to uh, Havana, Illinois, which is two hours north. I drive 98 miles. I'm up there roughly 14 days out of a month, unless I'm up there on overtime. It's really hard on us. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to take care of him. He's supposed to take care of me. And sometimes I feel like when I'm away, I'm not there to take care of him. I could be working down at the bait shop, 
I would be able to go home and do a lot more with my husband and with my grandkids and with my kids. We would like to create enough income to have her work here. But then we went from our best year ever in 2009 to our worst year ever in 2010. With uh, the big box stores moving in and with the additions of all the online retailers, uh, business was tough. Just a couple of years ago, Mark had thought about shutting his doors, you know, and, and moving on. This is a landmark. This place goes down, uh, where they gonna go? Where your fishermen and your anglers and hunters gonna go get this stuff? That was kind of drained, you know. Drained, getting older, you don't have the energy. I, I would have hated to see the doors close. This is home to me. They treat you with love coming through the door. It's enjoyable coming in here every day, and not many people can say that about their jobs. I love it, being in here. I really hope that we get things going to where she doesn't have to worry about, you know, we're going to be here next year. Bluff City has so much potential. They're located just a few miles from some of the best blue catfishing waters in the world. And yet, it doesn't sound like they're profitable. Luckily, we've got Hillary Hutchinson on our side, and she's built a life out of marrying fishing expertise with business savvy. Hillary was co-owner of Trout TV, runs her own guide service, and owns her own shop. She's a perfect person to help Bluff City turn a profit without giving up their passion. Why were they closed? It almost looks like it does, not I mean, from the outside, I think we need to address this. It looks a little mm -hmm. abandoned or kind of foreboding. Um, when you drive past, you don't really realize like right. they're here. They're actually open. Good morning. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh, I want you to meet Hillary. Hello. Hi, Hillary. This is Whitney. Hi, Whitney. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great. This is Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? All right, well, show us around. OK, well, the store's kind of laid out by a different section, so we'll start up here at the front. We have pretty much bass plastics to this wall, big bite baits. This entire wall is all stuff we're closing out. We used to carry every Zoom item that was made. It worked well before the internet because we'd have guys drive 200 miles to come mm -hmm. by Zoom. Mm -hmm. But since the internet's got everything available, that doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So then down here is more crappie stuff. So different colors work in different places and we we do real whoa we just thought the light <laughs> yeah the, we we got a little some lighting issues that's that's one of the things i was really wanting to try to get fixed uh it just goes it, out randomly yeah it, it's a switch over there and you go flip it it'll come back on sometimes it does that i don't know with my experience it goes <laughs> off a lot yeah, it does go <laughs> off a lot so lighting is definitely on the checklist and so is the bathroom mark and whitney didn't exactly volunteer to take us in there on the tour but we did get a look and even for a bait shop bathroom, it's kind of gross. And speaking of kind of gross. And then your live baits behind the counter? Live baits behind the counter. There's our pet turtles. <gasps> no, these are pets. They're not bait. No, they're not bait. They're pets. <laughs> oh. What percentage of your business is live bait? Oh, it's pretty significant. Live yeah, and frozen bait's probably 25, 30%. Wow. That's our high, high turn, high, high market okay. stuff. Can I try? You sure can. Okay, all right, all right. Hillary, all you right. play the customer, Mark. I would really like to get a dozen rosy reds and half a tube of crickets, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Come on, lady, there's already somebody at my fishing hole right now. Let's <laughs> things up. How's that? Is that good? I don't want that one. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a big scoop. Oh, your profitability just tanked so now that I've been here. That's about five, five dozen. Yeah. <laughs> Just a dozen. Well, we like to over deliver here. <laughs> Give us a sense for kind of the health of the business. If you had to say we're making money, we're breaking even, we're losing money, where would you say you're falling? Last year was $46,000 loss, primarily driven by, my, we opened two more stores in a couple of areas just to see if, there, if we could get something going there. So we've since shut those down. Biggest way to get to profitability is to grow the revenue and reduce the expenses. But how do you feel like you're doing kind of on that expenses side? We buy most products pretty fairly right. We use a local manufacturer for our sinkers, for our big mm -hmm. sinkers. Our problem has been getting the sales up. That's where we've been struggling. Walk us through why the windows were boarded up. 
in order to get more, because it was all windows, in order so we could, you know, pegboard could be put there and stuff displayed. Yeah, as we were walking up, we kind of questioned if you were, you know, open. Did, did they remember that we were coming? Are they open? And it feels a little, you know, kind of, um, it, it's not as welcoming as you wow. guys are, right? We want to make sure the outside yes, it, 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 is it, it, bringing it's people. It's very, in. very drab. Drab mm -hmm. is the word, you know, it just mm -hmm. looks like another drab building on Broadway. Yeah. What percentage of your customers would you say are like your current loyal customer base? And how many are coming through the door for the first time? We, we have been gaining new customers over the last year. Uh, one of the things that, that I started last year to increase uh, reaching more people was a series of catfish tournaments out on the river and uh, called Catfish on the Confluence because we're at the confluence of the Missouri mm -hmm. and the Mississippi coming together. Very clever. And, uh, but I would like to get more out-of-town people uh, in for those. Absolutely. Yes, let's do more of those. I mean, that's not just good for your business. That's good for the entire city of Alton and your um, national visibility. Yep. Hillary, you're, you're a woman running your own fly shop, guide service. I've been after Whitney for the last couple of years that she needs to be the face of our business. And she's been reluctant about it. What's your hesitation? That maybe it should be a catfish or something? <laughs> or like a spoon bill? A big part of Bluff City Outdoors is Whitney. She went to an, another store and then when she came back, all the customers had followed her yes. to the other one and then came back here. Well, tell us the story. I just, I had to go somewhere for a little bit just to try it out. And it helped me learn different things because, you know, I was kind of managing that whole area without him. Wherever she was working is where the live bait customers were going. She's clearly a competitive edge. So I think that probably the first step is accepting that you're a big driving force behind this. And, you know, being uh, the face of it is, is probably going to be better for the business. Maybe you can give yourself a raise. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> So the fact that Mark is literally passing down his business to Whitney is huge because it's not always that the next generation is going to be as passionate about something that you were, especially when it comes to something like fishing, which is like worms, guts, fish. And to find out that, you know, your stepdaughter has the same passion for it that you do, that doesn't happen every day. The Mississippi River defines this town. And between the fishing tournaments they're hosting and the out-of-town anglers Bluff City outfits to fish these world-class waters, Mark and Whitney have a unique opportunity to bring people and dollars into Alton. Destination businesses like this are great for small towns, so we've got to get Bluff City healthy enough that Mark, and eventually Whitney, can keep it running for years to come. All right, so let's talk about attracting new customers. That will obviously help us with the revenue piece, with us increased sales. Earlier, you you referenced that you know the the internet has really hurt your sales. People, right. you know, uh, will go online and they will price compare things. It's going to be really hard for you to compete online and, and continue to operate kind of an e-commerce platform. And so we need your website to do something different. We need your website to tell the story, to tell you the, about the experience. We need it to leverage the fact that you have access to these amazing waters. We want to make Alton known as the place that you come to do this kind of fishing and that Bluff City Outdoors is where you go to get your stuff. Yeah. I mean, when you were talking about what your competitive edge is and you're saying it's the Trophy River catfish and the blue cat, I mean, people type in Trophy Catfish, for example, as opposed to just fishing rods, you know, it would be very cool if they popped we up. We could there. start winning that search for, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think the big box, I know the big box retailers are not buying those kinds of search terms, but we could own that space for you. One of the concerns that we have is, you know, you change the name from Bluff City Tackle to Bluff City Outdoors. Right now, the search engines are not ranking you as high as they may if you could combine kind of that search authority into one brand or one business. It's seeing you as two different businesses. Uh, it behooves us to just clean that up so we can focus all the search authority on um, Bluff City Outdoors. So do you guys do anything? Do you have any relationships with guides or do you do any guiding yourself or take people for their first fishing excursion? We have guides that come that to the with. yeah that we work with at the store, but none actually from the store. Are you getting a cut of that referral? Is there? Uh, we don't get a commission or anything. We do just send people their way. Mm -hmm. And are you booking the trips for them? We're not booking. That, no, that's what I would love number. to be able to do. We just okay. give them their phone number. Um, that could be something you could try in this next season. Start booking for them and taking a percentage, you know, of their trip. The guide can meet their people at your shop. We want that to be a natural conclusion that they, you know, gear up at your shop. And there's what, about three guides working there. Yeah, we got three of them. Yeah. Hopefully we could talk them into doing that, mm -hmm. you know. 
in the increasing of sales, pricing strategy plays into that big time. So how are you determining kind of that price point and is it based on competition? We try to make sure we're in the ballpark with everything. The six ounce bank sinker, uh, I think we're about a dollar thirty on them. Yes. Bass Pro Shops is probably three dollars for that mm-hmm. item. I'm sorry, it's terrible, but the fact that it's less, significantly less, I think it makes it a little bit like maybe you're a sucker. Ballpark is good, but there are also some products that, um, because you are more boutique, that you can afford to go outside of that a little bit and increase your margin. If they wanted to go to a big box store, they would be at Bass Pro Shop, but they are not. They are in your store. This is a specialty item. You should be charging more. All right, we'll look at that because I think we need to. We sell about 10,000 pounds of sinkers a year, so. I mean, if we raise your prices across the board in, in the right spaces and the right amount, we could actually get you in the black. This is exciting because it feels like Bluff City has so many ways to grow revenue, from pricing to taking better advantage of its world-class location in the fishing world to physically making the shop look a little more, well, open. The deluxe team will take charge of the branding and marketing, finding the best ways to tell the bait shop story to the most people. Hillary will continue to work with them on operations and increasing margin on every sale. And we're hiring local contractors and working with Ty on physically overhauling the space. It's a lot, but if we do this right, we get to help a family spend more of their lives together. Bluff City Outdoors is your classic bait and tackle shop, but they're running into some struggles. When you drive past the outside, it looks like they're closed, like they have, the windows have been boarded up and they're no longer in business. Definitely needs a lot of work on the outside. <laughs> I'd say as exteriors go, this is our biggest task. So we're gonna put on a new roof for them, and on the front, we're gonna take out some of their shrubbery, but just kind of sprucing the whole place up. The outside is getting in their way of business. The inside, I think, is actually part of the experience. So that's why focusing on the outside is going to be so vital. And the signage, too, is confusing because there's two signs. Yeah, I know. He's, he's got one over here, he's got yeah. one over there. They both have two different logos. Right. I mean, it, there's no continuity here. And then on Facebook, they have this. kind of has a lot going on. I think there's opportunity to take what they started here and just simplify it more. We started playing around with a little more of like a dynamic, three-dimensional cat fish and he looks like he's like maybe like a little fierce you know he's got some personality to him so which one did mark gravitate towards he loved this one but he was drawn to this color as the background so we brought that blue color over here for the final logo what about that bathroom the bathroom is bananas gross so (laughs) um so we have got to fix that Guys, we have great news. We've determined that we are going to be able to redo the bathroom within budget. (gasps) Do you see how the women were excited? (laughs) While the deluxe team gets Bluff City's brand and building ready to attract new anglers, I'm heading back to Alton to check in on Mark's end of the equation, margin. Have you started to think about raising prices? We haven't done it yet, and we typically like to do that during the off season. May not be able to triple our price, but we're gonna at least try to go two and a half times. Yeah. Are you starting to see on the horizon that maybe this business could support you not having to drive so far to work? It seems like it's gonna be that way. I've been going down there trying to learn some things from my husband when he's down there and a few things from Whitney. So I I I can see myself not working in a few years. For Felicia to give up a steady paycheck, we're going to have to do more than just get the business out of the red. They need to see real profit. It's time to explore those additional sources of revenue. We can do a lot for him online. He currently has a website, which is great. That's cool, because half the businesses don't. But it's very basic. And although people are buying from it, I think there's an opportunity for him and for us to tell his story better online. The fishermen don't want to go to the big box stores and ask where the tourists go. They want to ask a local and get the tips from them. So I think the tips and tricks section that we kind of developed will be good. Well, another unique service that he wants to add is the guide service. I think we're planning on just getting something that will allow them to see the schedules of all the guides as well as book their time. Guys, uh, we'll be booking a lot of the guide trips for you guys, but you have to keep the schedules up to date. You got the files out there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Is there an opportunity to sell any branded merchandise? Certainly in store. Okay. If we figured out a couple of items that are popular or that are needed for anglers, things like a cooler. Yeah, we can definitely find something like that. I think hats are always a great option, especially if you're outdoors. The team is racing to put finishing touches on website and swag, but we're also conspiring with Hillary to get the last piece of Bluff City's brand in place. She's back in Alton on a fishing trip with an ulterior motive, getting Whitney comfortable with being the face of the business. You know, I think Whitney, rightfully so, really looks up to Hillary, and Hillary has really mastered social media. So I feel like maybe if we have Hillary kind of encourage Whitney, like, this is really going to be valuable for your business. If you look at hashtag big catch, if you look at other relevant tags to fishing and to catfish, people love to showcase their trophy fish. And so Mark and Whitney, they are outdoors people. And we can tap into that and create some content that's like, get offline, go fish. Mm -hmm. This business has a very good opportunity to put their blue catfish, channel catfish on the map and to bring people from all over the world to Alton, Illinois. Everything is in place. So we're making one last trip to the bait shop with a few surprises still up our sleeves to unveil the new Bluff City Outdoors. Really came out good, didn't it? It did. It's incredible. I love the color. I love the lights, the new roof. It's a building to be proud of now instead of one that was just a grab building. Yes, it is. So I like it. <laughs> good, good. And the sign, look at this sign. It's incredible. There's so many different things that could have happened with the sign, but having the catfish in it is awesome. Well, everything out here looks amazing. Let's go inside and check out the improvements in there. Okay, okay. let's go check it out. Let me get the door for you. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, the lights make such a difference. Yep, I love it. It's brighter. It's wonderful. Just the improved lighting is so much easier to see in here. See the colors of the bait now. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yes. A million compliments. That's good. We've had people just, they'll, they'll stop in and say, what are you doing with this? It looks wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Can I check out the bathroom? Sure, yes. sure. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a difference in here. I Way love better. it. I love it's it. It's so much cleaner. There's only one toilet. Not afraid to come in here. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh gosh, I love the cabinet. I don't have to worry about things sitting on the floor all around. Thank you, I love it. Okay, so we have been having a lot of fun with your marketing. It's gonna be a great way to grow your business and bring in new customers. Um, and we love working with you on this logo. As you can see, we added the catfish. And we created this custom hook font on the end. So instead of having a serif, um, we actually added that hook icon, which really, you know, continues to communicate kind of that the tackle, the hooks, the fishing. I love that. That looked really, really good on t-shirts. You know, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right in there, or even if you made it bigger. So we printed love you it. a variety oh of t-shirts in different sizes. But, you know, we really feel like this badge icon works so well on merchandise for selling, especially with all those out-of-town visitors. Oh, that looks so good. That is nice. Okay. And I'm showing you these products in your new branded Bad. packaging. We also thought it would be fun to put your logo on a cooler. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that koozie. How cute. We have to make sure that the koozie works, so I think you ought to take the first step. Who's it going to be, Dad? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, Woo. Ooh, good and cold. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The cookies work. Um, okay, so you do a great job of promoting your events in Facebook events. We would love for you to also promote them through printed materials. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yes. I like that. This looks like a really legit tournament, right? Which, that is, which yes, you it are. Does. So also another printed piece would be that you have the entire event um, tournament calendar for the year. These are great to keep right here on the counter. I love Excellent. it. Excellent. I, I do. Love I love it. it. All right, do you want to see what it looks like when you apply it to a website? Yes. Yeah. Okay, they haven't seen this yet. I'm excited to show it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh that my gosh, cool. I love it. Let's see, we're using all of the fonts and the colors, and again, that color palette from your branding. This will be a rotating carousel right here, this image. It'll go through the, we know Alton, we know trapping, we know fishing. Again, communicating that you have this expertise. We added a tab that's called local tips. So we talk about, you know, what type of hooks work best for catfishing, how to choose the right sinker for trophy catfishing. People are Googling those same questions. Mm -hmm. And when they put those search words in and are looking for it, then your answer is going to be one. Exactly. Yes, yeah, search authority will be um, a, a big part of that. So if people click on products, and there's multiple ways that they can get there. <laughs> we have uh, an equal distribution between items that you can only get in store mm -hmm. and ones that you can purchase online from you so that we have a good balance between the two. You have done some work to clean up the e-commerce site right. and we're linking to it. That's an important part of your business yep. too. So the next tab is My favorite. Book a guide. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> right away in the imagery, we're communicating that there's expertise at play here. And this is my favorite part. The organizer in me loves that we have check guide availability. So you're helping one step more, right? So Mark, you worked really hard on building this calendar out. So kind of what you're doing here by building this, Mark, is a really great thing for the local industry. Those guys are pretty, pretty excited exciting. about it. I, I bet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, yay! I just love this it. This is our About Us page. Oh, oh man. And Whitney, yeah. it was a very conscious decision that we wanted you oh, to be front so and center. And this kind of puts you front and center, not only as the friendly face and the welcoming person, but the one person here who knows her stuff. Not that everybody else doesn't, of course. Oh, she does. But she they knows can her really stuff. depend on getting the right products for the right price at the right time, and they're excellent advice, and you'll be sending them out for the best day they've had. Oh, look at you. you guys have made that look so good, and I'm so happy to see that. I'm excited on how that turned out. You guys did really good. That's all you. I mean, this is just showcasing what you already have. You're the meat of it. The three of you here and what you're doing and how you're bringing this fishing community together and continuing to grow and be strong, that's all you. That looks really good. <laughs> that just made the store look that much more professional. And that's something we needed in here really badly. That's ours. That's ours. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's, us. that's what oh. we do. <laughs> I love it. I love that that's not like an age thing. I, I'll know now that my seven-year-old will forever use my sleeve as a thing. <laughs> it's endearing. I didn't really realize it until Amanda presented it on the website that we really are those the experts in the area on this stuff. All right, so I have one more surprise, but I need you to follow me outside. We would love to really see you do events and have things here right. in your parking lot. So we wanted to do something to make that easier for you to do. Oh! Holy crap! That is cool. That is sweet. <laughs> Deluxe. They brought some expertise and knowledge to, to the table for us. And, you know, we're the ones who have to finish it, getting it across the goal line. There's a lot we got to get done and in touch with it, but I definitely see myself here in 30 years and running the show. It's, this isn't like a job. This is a job that you love. A job that you love. Standing under Bluff City's new tent, I can't help but think about all the things that wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the bait shop. Mark wouldn't have met Felicia. Whitney wouldn't have found her calling. Butch would be working at some big box and all of the anglers who come to fish these waters would be shopping there instead of gathering here. This is what one small business can do. And it's why places like Bluff City are worth fighting for. I think there's gonna be a strong enough legacy to, to, to leave for Whitney and allow her, I mean, knowing that if she just keeps, you know, keeps it, the momentum going, Everything I've ever achieved, I've had to earn myself. I, I was really not in love with anything from anybody. So this is kind of me trying to do better for, for my kids than, than I had. Lighthouse Sounds is a recording studio run by a young and talented duo. We started this together and we're in it together. But an ambitious expansion has them risking it all. We spent 100 grand total probably of investment and it could all go to nothing. Can the small business revolution team push them over the hump? 
two weeks with no income, kiss of death. Find out if they have what it takes to get to the national stage. One, two, three. Oh, wow. On the next episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street. We all love small businesses for their personal service. And nowhere is that more true than at Bluff City Outdoors. Visit deluxe.com backslash Bluff City to learn more about how the Deluxe team used marketing to help Mark and family showcase their expertise and local know-how to reel in new customers.